Welcome back to Guardian Boot Camp. Guardian, in September, Bungie could reintroduce the strike point system, and what that means is you are going to be paired with random people competing for the most kill count and fastest times as a squad completed for any given strike. With that being said, there are certain tips and strategies that some players need to know so they can get off of those risk runner type handicap weapons and start using some really beast tactics, beast loadouts, and becoming overall beast. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Since episode 2 originally got deleted, I have to remake it. I don't have another 5 days to put into it to categorize everything and you know get it all nice and tidy. So I'm just going to do gameplay and talk alongside it. The mindset, why I use the weapons I do, the tactics that I'm doing. Just an overall kind of just how it's all done pretty much. You can put a gun in front of any target and a gun will shoot that target and kill it. But not all guns are good in the air and far range. Not all guns are good at shooting sideways when you're falling. Not all guns are good at shooting fadeaway shots or weird angles. That's what I'm getting at. You need to find those guns that can perform well no matter what angle you're in and be able to do damage. As you can see right here, I'm far behind. Just because I'm far behind doesn't mean I shouldn't get good at throwing long range grenades such as that right there. And also with your primary weapon or your heavy weapon, we'll get to the energy later, but anytime I see a target, I don't care how far away it is, I'm always shooting at that target to do some kind of damage so by the time that I get there, it's weaker than it was when I was running to it. And then by the time I get there, I can use the grave robber and the kill clip. It just all works. I have that range, the grave robber, the kill clip, the wolf.w2, great accuracy. doing the double reload kill clip glitch that I just did where I had still had time to reload it to get the kill clip back in it. Just a lot of tactics that I can use with the primaries that I choose. I mean look at that, just the grave robber kill clipping it all through there, mowing all of them down with that nice air accuracy. Here's a sideways fall shot with the trackless waist. These are how I get most of my kills. I'm always shooting at something that I can see. Whether I got a grenade, a rocket, or an energy weapon, I'm always aiming for targets that are impractical to even shoot at, but I'm still shooting at them. Right here, I get to do that double reload again. The kill clip's about to run out, so I double reload it again, dump a few out, and keep the kill clip going that much longer. Turn into an eight second kill clip instead of a four. But here's Huckleberry, those fall away shots going sideways. The reason that I don't use it is because of this reason right here. This is a variable that's mixed into my equation of beasting that I don't want there anymore. So how do I get rid of that variable? I remove the gun altogether. I don't care how beast six perks are. If I can't hit shots that I normally get kills at by doing those type shots, I'm just not going to use it. Having that grave robber kill clip and that wolf.w2 scope on trackless, it nails it every time. So it's like I'm getting, I'm not ever having to risk myself slowing down because I can always hit these shots. Right here, throw the kill clip in. Now watch me miss every one of these shots. It doesn't even matter though, because I can just melee him and get that grave robber procced, and then take that dude out, melee him. It doesn't give me the grave robber, but I kind of don't want it to, because now I have another kill clip. So it all balances out perfectly on trackless waste. Same with better devils. I use it for the air range shots because the explosive body hits are really beast, as well as its crit shots rocket launcher the furthest I can shoot you know what I mean so it's like whatever there's no range you know fall off from this I can just keep shooting it from anywhere in a, in a map or a strike or or wherever I'm at I do a lot of practicing on patrol just to get good at those shots just throw it at a red bar as long as it's far away and you're just trying to hit it that's why I like large blast radius as well now let's talk about energy weapons and weapons without limitations. So first we'll talk about shotgun. I'm really just going to talk about shotgun. I'll mention recluse and things like that and why I don't use them because of specific shots that I don't want to be taken out of my variable equation of things I can and can't do when I'm beasting. I have grave robber on this, but with a shotgun, that's pretty much what you see is what you get. Just right in front of you, knock it down. Now when I get a fusion rifle out, I have that range, I have sweep shotting abilities, it just, I can jump and shoot this gun really well. It's a really agile weapon, and I knock so many targets down with this at a time. If it doesn't kill them, it at least damages all of them that I sweep. If I use a shotgun, it's just boom, you're done. But it'll never be able to take out three at a time, and the recluse can never take out three at a time. It might have a fast time to kill, but it doesn't have the range that this gun has, or any other similar fusion has. Those fall away shots are on point. 
Everything about it is just on point with this weapon, and if I used a Recluse, now I can't use my Trackless Waste Grave Arbor Kill Clip because that's too much of a range fall off for my loadout. And there's another type of shot you can't do with a Recluse as well. These ridiculous shots like this, where you're falling down and you're able to still sweep two at a time. I've even done three at a time like that, they're stacked right. And having those options are way better than any other options I can get from any other type weapon. So that's why I always go with this loadout, mix it with my builds, and when you mix it all together, that's what we're about to talk about right now. The strategies, my weapons, and my build, and applying it all in combat. Let's talk about practicing for those range shots, such as this one. Most people don't even know you can shoot a rocket all the way over there and kill all those dudes right when you launch in. Here's a tip for the Reckoning if you didn't know this. There's always two ways of adds, one at the top or one at the bottom. If you kill both of those really fast, two of you take off to one, two to the other one, it ends this first segment so fast. And by the time I even get to the adds, I've already killed all of them to where we're done with the first part of the tier three reckoning. Knowing the kind of range that your loadout has is a tool in itself. Like right here, there's not very many fusions, if any, that can hit this shot first time. Those three ads that I just killed are along the railroad tracks. I've tried aiming a main ingredient, a loaded question, and none of them will hit it every time like the timeline vertex will. So having that also as an option is beast. Just keep mowing and keep going. Rockets, throw all of these dudes right at the beginning. They're all dead. Melee boss tactic right there where they can't blow me backwards. You learned that in episode one of Guardian Boot Camp. Standing in your grenade right here is another tip. Throw your grenade at your feet and just stand in it to defend yourself while you're going beast. Throwing these shots off as you're making your way down. I do this all the time. Just keep beasting and keep throwing them. It's the fastest way to clear that area. Fusion rifle, blow them away on the way down. Watch this shot right here. I'm going to aim and shoot before I even see the target. I'm already charging it before I could even see the guy. And then we hit the ricochet as you learned about the launch pads in episode one, hitting those launch pads to get there in time. Pay attention to how fast I'm able to move around and still shoot the timeline vertex and still remain accurate. Hopping sideways right here, still lands it. Watch this shot way off in the distance. On the move in landing those type shots. I don't want that removed from my arsenal and having that type of range and damage is something that Recluse won't have. So to lose trackless waste to pair it with the Recluse and go like shoddy with my primary with Recluse, I just don't want to do all that. So I'd rather have the trackless waste kill clip grave robber combo and these slice it down powers from range or close range. It doesn't really matter with this gun. And that's something that you won't get out of other weapons such as a Recluse having that immediate power and immediate range power. When you're falling down into this cave, the best shot for a grenade is right in this little crevice in the cave right there. Throw your grenade, it takes care of the whole right side. You hop up to the left, take care of those two ads there, and then finish off the night with the fusion shot, and boom, you can just keep on going. No risk runner needed when you got a good strat. Same with this, if you have a rocket, use that. A grenade, use that. Keep shooting as soon as you bust their shields. Don't stop. Melee, grenade, whatever you got to do. And just keep firing without stopping this whole time. And that's when those explosive rounds come in handy when you're not able to be that accurate, but you're still able to do damage by hitting one with the explosive. Don't be afraid to use your grenade at your feet, as I talked before. Use it before your shield bust. That way you can at least stagger them to where you can go ahead and finish the kill. So throw your grenade at your feet. If you get Thrall coming at you, anything, use it as a defensive measure. And also it does damage, so... Throw a grenade up here, throw a rocket. I do that strat all the time, instantly takes them out. Right here, throw the grenade down, stand in the grenade, and start doing work. Use it as your tool, man. It is there to protect you. Anytime you enter this area, always send rockets and grenades flying, and you'll take them down really quick. You can also hold on to one of those balls until another one comes out of that door to go ahead and knock three out if you want to. Watch this shot here. Just firing it without even looking to the target. I'm just charging it and correcting it as it goes the whole time. It's just such a beast, man. I'm not saying that if you don't have timelines, you're not going to be able to do shots like that. It's just that one does it better. Here's a reason why you need high sensitivity. Watch this. I'm going to throw a grenade, turn around real fast, and then turn around again before I land to keep going. Boom, boom. Right here. Grenade, rocket, super. All in one motion. Take that area out really quick. Wouldn't even matter if they had the tether there or not. Here's a cool fatality you can use on Sabbath and Song. 
only if you're using a stationary super, a super that can, you know, do damage without having to move around. Boom. We learned this in the new Arcadia strategy guide where you can have the boss launch you from point A to point B to get over to the other side quicker. Getting over there faster means you get to the boss faster, so dump them down. And I always pretend like there's no teammates on my team when I kill ads, so I'm just gonna throw a grenade over there just because it's just a reflex kind of thing. See an ad, kill an ad kind of thing. Now pay attention to this. I get my taken armaments, dump them with the rocket. Watch me hop up and throw the grenade and the rocket without really any focus on the target. Just from the trust of just doing it so many times and practicing it, that shot doesn't seem like it's that difficult, but I'm on the move, constantly moving and not really aiming and looking at my target and still landing those type shots. So when I'm talking about, you know, practicing those impractical shots, when you get good at those type shots, that's when you get really, like right here, watch this. He's not even going to be there, but boom. I just know from practice where he's going to be. Use the boss melee counter we learned in episode one, where he can't bounce you backwards. And then I'm still going to throw a grenade over there because, oh, I'm far away. Doesn't mean I still don't have that range with my grenade or other rockets or whatever I would have had. There's the same thing with the grenade again. Throw it at my feet because there's a lot of blackout thrall running everywhere. So anywhere that I know I'm going to be stopping, I'm going to be leaving a grenade in that way. That way I'm not at any risk of getting slashed down. Like what would have happened there? These ads are the most crucial ones to take out before you take out the ogre. So smash them down with a rocket real quick. Then hop back up here, take the ogre out. Here's a situation where if you have your super active, your super gives you a lot of body armor, meaning you can take a lot of damage. Make sure you leave yourself with enough room to get away or throw down a rift or whatever so you're not stuck out there when it ends and instantly die. Sorry that this episode 2 isn't as good as it was before it got deleted, but it's always going to be up to you to have foresight and prepare for the situations you know are going to be happening, basically. So make sure you always have a grenade when you need it. You always hold on to that one rocket when you could have dumped it. You know, you have to have good judgment on when to use things and when not to use things that are going to let you clear out the most ads the fastest. So I always have a grenade right here because there's always those ads running up the stairs and I always have my super ready right after that grenade and I mow all these ads down. This is a Chasma screen strike so there wouldn't normally be the boss here but whether he is or not it's still a perfect strategy to take out every ad including that boss in this area. But like I said, just make sure you have foresight. That's pretty much it, man. Get good at those impractical shots, those ridiculous shots. Use weapon loadouts that will accompany those kind of shots. Though some guns sound awesome like Risk Runner and Loaded Question, just because they have cool features doesn't mean that they're a beast gun. Like, if you ever pair up with me with a Risk Runner and a Loaded Question, you're just never going to get that gun procced because my strategies and the loadouts that I use are way more beast than what that gun can do and its performance, basically. This is when I'm racing against two people that were in a clan that deemed themselves as Strike Masters. And one has a Risk Runner, one has a Loaded Question, and they're about to see how they're not going to be able to proc those guns at all. At all. This entire Strike, and then Strike after that, and the one after that that you're about to see right now. So, I'm just going to talk my way through this, basically. The video's pretty much over. You can watch if you want to. But... Just pay attention to the strats that I'm using. I'll try to call them out, like right here. All I have is my fusion. I have no heavy. I got my super, though. I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I got the grenade proccing right now. He tries to proc his wrist runner, but it doesn't work. I know that there's about to be two sniper ads coming up. I don't want to get hit by those, so grave robber them. That way I don't have to waste time any on reload, and I can go back to that charge plate. Hit the charge plate. Ads come out. He pops his Crown of Tempest, I pop mine. He decides to go for that ad, but I'm way ahead of him on that. That's the last ad you want to get after you get this group of ads. Then you go back to that other one. And I have just enough mobility to hang in the air long enough to throw that grenade before I fall down. Another reason that mobility kicks ass, and it's the most subtle thing like that that makes it beast. Ads again. He steps in front of my grenade. He would. But... Yeah, using Risk Runner to waste your grenade by throwing it at your feet to proc, it's just the gun doesn't have that fast of time to kill when you can just mix it with a way better strategy. And you can use like a main ingredient fusion. A uh, Nox Veneris is a really good year one fusion that's a 660. There's a ton of really good fusion rifles in this game that I don't see why people aren't using over shotguns and Risk Runners and things like that because they, they outperform way better. 
right here. Nade to the left, super to the right. Doesn't even get a chance to proc anything. That risk runner out of here, bro. More adds. Still got a little bit of my super left. About to get that grenade back. No, caught me on a reload. Work on the boss some. I cut through a lot of this just so it's not such a lengthy video. You know what I mean? It's already like 20 minutes, so I thought I would just cut a lot of this stuff out to, you know, get to the chase of the combat, I guess. But that's pretty much when I kind of melted the boss for a second and then went back to ads. really because of my ammo conservation my super conservation knowing when to use it and you know just freaking knowing when to use everything pretty much it, just because I have it doesn't mean I have to use it but I do abuse my abilities like if I get a ton of rockets you're about to see a ton of rockets flying and then I might save one or two because I know that I'm gonna need it in a future situation that's gonna have a lot of ads drop out so it's like all about that there's a shortcut right here a lot of people don't know about Let's jump up there really quick Ads always spawn to the right and to the left. I know that in advance, so I'm already over here. Them being strike masters should have known that too. Then we come over here to the second wave, because you have to clear this wave before it starts the next encounter of you know ads that come out. So getting prepared for that, clearing them out so we get to that boss DPS phase again to make the strike go by faster pretty much. Everybody pops super on this first wave. I think people who are used to using Risk Runner against other randoms probably see it shining and doing a lot more work because there's not a lot of players in this game that are doing as much hustle to slay so risk runner probably does work on a lot of other players but when you get somebody that knows what they're doing they know their strategies and everything in and out you're just not ever going to get be able to use that weapon at all just not going to be procced because i'm not in areas for too long ads are down pretty quick and i'm moving on to the next wave and if you got to take time to throw a grenade at your feet and then start trying to melt ads, while well, you wasted that time, I'm already the half the room is already done at that point. You know what I mean? So it's not that good of a weapon because of that. But if you're using it with a bunch of players that are you know new or don't know what they're doing when it comes to like destroying ads, yeah, you probably do get it to proc and have some cool times with it. But that's just what I try to tell people, man. That like that love Risk Runner for some reason because of a an Aztec video or whoever made the video about the Risk Runner. It's just like, man, they get crushed on this. On the second strike, one of them tries to run ahead knowing that there's a ton of ads in the following room in this outside area, but I still hang back. Still go ahead and demolish him, let him get his head start. Here's one of those impossible shots right here. I'm not even really looking at the target. I'm just charging and stabbing it that direction. Finish it off. Long range rocket shot. Get me in the fight even though I'm way back out of the fight. Grenade to top it all off take out majority of the ads in there he's still ahead of me trying to stay ahead I know to turn here and bank a rocket off that ledge to take all those ads out though same with this one he can't get that risk runner to proc dude grenade rocket boom ads are done I got one rocket left I thought about using it right here then I realized I had one left and then I realized I need it right here for this area, which is why I use large blast radius. Boom, every ad right there is done, and that's exactly why I saved that rocket, to foresee that situation happening. And Nate over there, boom. I hear his risk runner going off, but I don't see him killing anything with it. And all the ads are basically done at that point. And here is the phase where the game decides it's time for me to die for no reason. I have full health, and I throw a grenade down at this ogre, and for whatever reason, it kills me. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but whatever. They get a little head start on me at that point, but we're also trying to slay this whole room. That reach on the Stormcaller, though, is pretty deadly. Alright, he grabs the freaking thing. So I nade up top, get that fusion going to work. There's the Risk Runner. Right here, bottom left of the door. As soon as your screen shakes, fire the rocket. And early damage. Really easy early damage right there. It's bottom left of the door all the time. Right here, I'm going to rocket and then super. 
So as soon as you fire the rock at close range, super to negate the blast damage with your super. And boom, whole area wiped. Then I just finished off the second area right here. Decided to go ahead and waste a rocket because I know that I only really need one. So I do a little bit of body damage. Since Zol's health is so low, he's going to spawn as to the right side. So I get that rocket ready and blast him out. Grenade over there. Perfect landing. Hop over there right in the bunch, right towards the grenade. So I'm protected by the grenade as I'm, you know, doing work basically. And now it's time to finish the boss. Boom. Line him up. And he got a hit start. Last one, but I won't finish it. But I will show you the end screen numbers. Grenade here. I mean, with taking armaments on my build, there's just no way. There's just no way. It's going to be a whole rocket fest the whole time. And I'll show you why I don't use the loaded question right here. We're about to go at it with this yellow bar, but his gun is just too slow. One. Two. You're too late, bro. You're too late. That's why you don't use that slow, heavy-ass gun. That is it, Guardian. Thanks for watching. Like I said, it's all about ammo conservation, having a right build with good recovery, good mobility, good recharge rate, the right weapons that let you land those really agile shots, guns that keep you running and gunning no matter what kind of stance or situation or angle it has to be shot from. Those are the kind of weapons that let you become beasts and outkill another Guardian, where you don't have to rely on specific guns like Risk Runner and Loaded Question. You can rely on your entire build as a whole that allows you to do faster and more precise killing strategies. Y'all take it easy, Guardians, and I will catch y'all next time. In space.